Hello friends, so welcome to the third lecture of this module and in this lecture we will continue from the last lecture in which we have introduced Euler's method and in the Euler's method we have seen that we need to reduce the step size for getting a better accuracy and hence reducing the step size means you need to do more calculations. So, in this lecture our aim is to develop a whole family of numerical methods that can attain any order of accuracy unlike the Euler's method where we are having accuracy of order h. So, here we will do the Taylor's method in this lecture and specifically I will talk about quadratic Taylor method and then I will tell you how we can generalize Taylor method up to any order of any order. But in Taylor's method we need to know how to determine higher order derivatives of the solution of a differential equation at a point. And this is also we will explore in this lecture that how to calculate higher order derivative for a given function. So, let us start with quadratic Taylor method. So, the quadratic Taylor method is based on a more accurate approximation that is the approximation up to second order derivative uh, like in Euler's method we have taken only up to first order derivative, but here we are taking up to second order derivative. So, a function f can be approximated about a point x naught by this expression that is f of x naught plus h times f prime x naught plus h square upon 2 f double prime x naught. To describe the algorithm we need to specify how the numerical solution can be advanced from a point x k y k to a new point x k plus 1 y k plus 1 where x k plus 1 is x k plus h. The basic idea is to use the above equation and compute y k plus 1. So, by the Taylor series expansion we can write y k plus 1 as y k plus h time y prime k plus h square by 2 y double prime k. So, in this expression you can see we are having y prime k as well as y double prime k. So, y prime k can be given by the differential equation from our initial value problem. However, we need to calculate y double prime k here. So, for calculating y double prime k we will use this lemma and in this lemma we are having that if a function y prime that is equals to f of x y that is the given differential equation with initial condition y at x naught equals to y naught and the same time suppose that the derivative of f of order p minus 1 exists at the point x naught y naught then the p at order derivative of the solution y x at x equals to x naught can be expressed in terms of f p capital F p x naught y naught where capital F p is a function defined by f and its derivative of order less than p. So, let us take an example to get a better understanding of this lemma. So, in this example we are having a differential equation y prime equals to x plus y square together with initial condition y at x naught equals to y naught. Now, let us assume that y prime equals to f of x y or I will write f 1 of x y. Now, if I calculate y double prime that is some according to previous lemma I am having f 2 of x y then this is the differentiation of this particular term with respect to x. So, it will be 1 for this particular x and then 2 y into y prime. So, that is 1 plus 2 times y and y prime is f 1 of x y. So, here you can note down for calculating the second order derivative of y that is the y double prime we need the value that is the value of y as well as value of capital F 1 x y that is the derivative of y which is less than order 2 
and this is coming out now if I substitute the value of f 1 x y from here that is your x plus y square. So, it will be 1 plus 2 x y plus 2 times y cube. Similarly, we can calculate higher order derivative for example, if I want to calculate y triple prime that will be f 3 x y. So, it will become 0 plus 2 times y plus twice x y into y prime plus 6 y square into y prime or from here I can write if I want to calculate from here directly 0 plus 2 times y into y double prime. So, if I am coming from here, so it will be 0 plus 2 times y into y double prime plus 2 y prime whole square. So, basically it is 2 times y into f 2 x y plus 2 times f 1 x y whole square. So, here again you can note that I am using the value of y, I am using capital F 1, I am using capital F 2 for calculating capital F 3 according to previous lemma and by substituting all these values I can get y triple prime. Now, how to use quadratic Taylor method? For that again we will consider an example of an initial value problem that is given as y prime equals to a small f of x y that is also my capital F 1 of x y and it is given as x minus 1 over 1 plus y and the initial condition is y at x equals to 0 equals to 1. We want to solve this particular initial value problem on the interval 0 to 1 with step size h equals to 0 0.5 using quadratic Taylor method. So, first of all we need to calculate the second order derivative of y for applying the, the quadratic Taylor method and for doing that y double prime x can be given as f 2 of x y that is basically 1 plus y prime x upon 1 plus y whole square. So, now after that what I will do? I need to solve a differential equation y prime equals to x minus 1 over 1 plus y, y at x equals to 0 is given as 1. So, I want to solve this on the interval 0 to 1 with h equals to 0 0.5. So, now y double prime is 1 plus y prime x over 1 plus y whole square. So, here x naught is x naught is 0, x 1 is 0 0.5 that is 0 plus h and x 2 is 1. At the initial y at x 0 that is my y 0 it is 1. Now, I need to calculate y at 0 0.5 and y at 1 using the quadratic Taylor method. So, for doing this what I want I will write that y x equals to y 0 plus h times y prime 0 plus h square by 2 y double prime 0. Now, y 0 is given as 1 if I want to calculate y prime 0, 
that is y prime 0. So, from here I will calculate y prime 0 x is 0, 0 minus 1 upon 1 plus 1. So, it is minus half. y double prime 0 will I can calculate from here. So, 1 plus y prime 0 that is minus half upon 1 plus 1. So, 1 plus 1 will become 2 square will become 4. So, 1 minus 1 upon 8. it is basically 7 upon 8. So, after putting these values here y 0 is 1 plus h is 0 0.5 y prime 0 is minus 1 by 2 plus 0 0.5 whole square upon 2 and then y double prime 0 is 7 by 8. And after simplifying this I will get a value 0 0.859375. So, this is the approximation of y at x equals to 0 0.5. Again, if one I want to calculate y at 1, what I will use? I will use y 1 plus h time y prime 1 plus h square upon 2 y double prime 1. So, I am having value of y 1 which I will get is 0 0.859375. I will calculate the value of y prime 1 from this formula after putting the value of x as 0 0.5 and y as this value. And then similarly, I can calculate y double prime with the help of this expression. And then finally, I will get this value which is coming out something 0 0.9641 and so on. So, this is the overall procedure for implementing quadratic Taylor method for solving an initial value problem. And here we are getting more accuracy compared to the Euler's method without reducing the step size means taking the larger steps. So, this is the curve of the approximate solution and the exact solution and here you can see between 0 to 1 the curve the two curves are quite similar and hence we are getting a good approximation with a larger step size using the quadratic Taylor method. If we talk about Taylor methods of higher order we can do it. The quadratic Taylor method is easily generalized to a higher degree by including more terms in the Taylor polynomial. For example, the Taylor method of degree b uses the formula y at x k plus 1 equals to y k plus h times y prime k plus h square upon 2 y double prime k and up to p at order derivative. That is the last term will be h raised to power p upon factorial p into y k p a derivative. To advance the solution from the point x k y k to x k plus uh, x k plus 1 y k plus 1 we will use this formula. So, just like for the quadratic method the main challenge is to determination of the derivatives. How to determine higher order derivatives and for that we can use the same lemma. However, we have to do a lot of computations and hence the complexity increase quickly with the degree. It is possible to make use of software for symbolic computation to produce the derivatives of higher degree. Now, if we talk about error in quadratic Taylor method, so we can drive it in this way. So, y at x n plus h can be given by y of x n plus h times y prime x n plus h square upon 2 y double prime x n plus third and I higher order derivatives. So, in this equation we will assume, substitute y prime as f of x y x and y double prime as f 1 of x y that is the derivative of f with respect to x and so on. So, this gives y n plus 1 equals to y n plus h times y prime n plus h square upon 2 y double prime n with initial condition y 0 equals to capital Y. 
here y double prime n as you know is f at x n y n and y double prime n is f 1 x n y n. So, taking the difference between 1 and 2 we get the in the left hand side it will be y n plus 1 minus y at x n plus h. So, that it will be the error in n plus 1 iteration and let us denote it e of n plus 1 equals to if you take the see the first term in right hand side it will be y n minus y x n. So, this I am writing e n plus h times f at x n y x n minus f x n y n plus second order term and then uh, third and higher order terms. If we assume that both f as well as f 1 are Lipschitz continuous then we can replace these two expressions in uh, round brackets like this one and this one by the definition of Lipschitz continuity in this way that is e n plus 1 will be less than equals to e n plus h times k y x n minus y n. So, k is Lipschitz constant for this particular expression plus half times h square k 1 and again this term that is basically e n it is again e n. So, this after simplification I can write e n if I take out 1 from here plus h k from here plus half times h square k 1 plus third and higher order terms. This expression can be written in this form if I use the expression for the error from the first iteration that is e naught that is the initial error and finally, this sum can be written in this way that is 1 plus alpha plus alpha square plus up to alpha n minus 1 in this particular form and finally, it is coming out in this way. So, this particular expression gives a guarantee to be that the error will be of order h square which is an immense improvement over Euler's method where we were having the accuracy of order h. We can also use this Taylor series for finding the approximation of a function about a given point. For example, if I want to find out the expression of f x equals to cos x about x equals to 0. So, Taylor series is given by this one and hence we I am having different order derivatives in different terms after calculating all these at x equals to 0. So, I will get 1 0 minus 1 0 1 and then substituting in expression I will get this particular 1 minus x square by factorial 2 plus x raised to power 4 upon factorial 4 and so on. So, this was about the Taylor's method and here I told you that we can use quadratic Taylor method which is having the error of order of h square. However, we can use higher order uh, Taylor method for getting better accuracy. Now, I will explain one more method that is Euler's modified method and that is just an improvement of the Euler's method which we have discussed in earlier lecture. And what is this method? Basically, in this method we will use an average slope rather than the slope at the start of the interval. Like we have taken the slope at the starting point in of the interval in Euler's method. So, what I will do? I will evaluate the slope at the start of the interval. I will estimate the value of the dependent variable y at the end of the interval using the Euler's method. Evaluate the sl slope at the end of the interval. Find the average slope using slope one, uh, in step 1 and step 3 and compute a revised value of the dependent variable y at the end of the interval using the average slope of step h with Euler's method. So, if I want to explain this method, so basically problem is I need to solve this problem y prime equals to f of x y, y x naught equals to y naught and I want to calculate y 1 which is the value of y at x naught plus h. So, what I have done in the Euler's method I have used y 1 equals to y 0 plus h time f x 0 y 0 where I am approximating the value of y 
at x equals to x 1 by the slope which I have taken at the initial point of the interval. For example, if this is the function, this is the point x naught. this is the point x 1. So, here I know the value and I am taking the slope here and I am approximating this value by this one in Euler's method. Here I have calculated this value of y 1 and I will use this as the predict value. Then what I will do? I will correct this predict value by a new formula that will be y naught plus h times f of x naught y naught plus f of x 1 y 1 star. So, what I am doing? using the Euler's method, I am finding the slope at the end point of the interval means at this particular point and then what I am doing, I am taking the average of the slope over the whole interval by 1 by 2 of these 2. And here what I am doing, this formula I can use again and again because this is the character formula. And this formula I can use again and again in an implicit manner. How you can see here I am having y 1 as well as y 1 star. So, I will calculate y 1 from this again I will substitute that y 1 here. I will get a new y 1 that is the more better approximation and again and again I will repeat this process and I will get a better approximation. So, this these two formulas jointly is called Euler's modified method. So, in first you need to find out a predict value of y 1 and then you can create that predict value by this formula. So, in general setting I can write this as y n plus 1 equals to y n plus h times f of x n y n if you know the value of y n at x equals to x n and you want to calculate value at x equals to x n plus h that is x n plus 1. So, this is predict formula and the character formula is y n plus 1 equals to y n plus h upon 2 f at x n y n plus f at x n plus 1 y n plus 1 star. So, if we talk about error analysis in this modified method. So, suppose at starting y at x 0 is given by capital Y and at each step I am having y prime n equals to f of x n y n that is the given differential equation and u equals to y n plus y n prime upon 2, u prime is f x n plus half. So, x n plus half is basically x n plus h by 2, I am taking the half length of the interval comma u and finally, y n plus 1 is given as y n plus h times u prime. Then, if I use the Taylor series expansion of y about x equals to x n, then I can write in this way if I calculate y prime x n plus half it is given by y prime x n plus half h. So, that will come in this form and here you can note down just look at these two terms that are similar. So, I can substitute this particular thing here. So, y x n plus 1 h given as y x n plus h time y primes x n plus half plus order of h cube. Now, the difference between y prime n and y prime at x n is given by these two functions 
and we are assuming that f is Lipschitz continuous with Lipschitz constant k. So, I can write in this way and that is equals to k times E n that is error in n -th iteration. So, u minus y x n plus half can be given now by this particular equation which is less than equals to y n plus y x n I have taken this term and this term together plus half h I have taken common. So, y prime n minus half h I have taken out. So, y prime x n plus order of h square. So, this is E n plus half h k E n plus order of h square. Similarly, I can get u prime minus y prime x n plus half and that is given by k times 1 plus half h k into E n plus order of h square. So, finally, y n plus 1 minus y x n plus 1 that is the error in n plus 1 step is can be calculated y n plus h times u dash minus y x n minus h y prime x n plus half plus order of h cube that is less than equals to y n minus y x at x equals to x n plus h time u prime minus y prime x n plus half plus order of h cube. So, E n plus 1 will be less than E n plus h k I have taken common. So, 1 plus half k h into E n and these values I have substituting from the previous slide which I have calculated earlier. So, if I take alpha equals to 1 plus h k plus half h square k square and so on. So, after substituting these values and writing the error in nth iteration in terms of error in initial error that is the error in the initial iteration then I will get this particular approximation. And again like the quadratic Taylor method here the algorithm is error of order h square which is again an improvement over the simple Eilers method that is given error of order h. So, after this we will take one example of Eilers modified method. So, example is given by this particular initial value problem. So, y prime x is 2 y upon x plus x and I need to find out the value of x in interval 1 to 1.4 by taking n equals to 4. The same time exact solution is also given for this particular differential equation which is x square plus x square log x with natural base. And now, so here if I calculate the initial value of y at x equals to 1 it will be 1. So, y 1 is 1 I need to calculate y at 1.1, y at 1.2, y at 1.3 and y at 1.4. And the same time we will compare the approximate value with the exact value and we will see how much error we are getting in our solution. So, how to apply this method? So, the initial value problem is given as y dash equals to 2 y upon x plus x, x belongs to interval 1 to 1 1.4. So, the true solution analytic solution also given that is y star x is x square plus x square log x. Now, I need to solve this problem. So, here x naught is 1. So, y naught is from the exact solution I can calculate when x is 1 y will become 1. x 1 is 1.1 y 1 I need to calculate x 2 is 1.2, y 2 I need to calculate, x 3 is 1.3, y 3 I need to calculate and so for y 4, x 4 that is 1.4. So, let us first calculate y 1 using the Eilers modified method. So, y 1 is given as y 0 plus h time f x 0 y 0. So, y 0 is 1 plus h is 0 0.1 here f of x 0 y 0 k 
can be calculated from this because it is my f of x y. So, 2 upon 1 2 plus 1 3. So, it is coming at 1.3 and this is the predict value. Now, I will correct this value. So, y 1 will be y 0 plus h by 2 f of x 0 y 0 plus f of x 1 y 1 star. So, y 0 is 1 plus h is 0 0.5 upon 2 f x 0 y 0 is 3 plus f x n y n star will become 2 into 1.3 upon 1 x 1 is 1.1 1 plus 1.1. 1 .1. So, 1 plus sorry it is 0.1 0.05 into 4.1 plus 2.6 upon 1.1. 1 .1. So, after simplifying this particular expression I will calculate the value of y 1 that is the value of y at x equals to 1.1. This value is coming y at x equals to 1.1 is 1.32405 where the exact value was 1.32533. So, a very small difference we are having here that is after third place of decimal then y at x equals to 1.2 is 1.69982 the exact one is 1.70254, y at x equals to 1.3 is 2.12905, exact one is 2.13340 and then finally, this, these are the approximate and exact values of y at x equals to 1.4. So, here can, you can note down from these two columns that the approximate solution is quite close to the exact one. And this is the implementation of the Euler's modified method for solving initial value problem. So, in this lecture we have seen two methods those are having error of order h square that is the quadratic Taylor method and then Euler's modified method. In the next lecture we will learn another class of numerical methods for solving ordinary differential equation and those methods are called Runge Kutta method. So, thank you very much for listening this lecture.